introduce my husband, Tom, that I'd like to forego the traditional homage of rowdy medical classes in favor of a birth preparation course called hypnobirthing. I observed him carefully to gauge his response. <laughs> Tom is a really terrific guy. He's a real man's man with a sensitive streak a mile wide. He wanted to be supportive and knew that laughing out loud at the absurd pronouncement <laughs> probably sent his pregnant hormonal bike into a rage. So he did what they do in that Kit Kat commercial. He paused. <laughs> a pregnant pause, if you will. And then, keeping his tone neutral, he said simply, okay. But I knew what he was really thinking. He was really thinking, good lord, is this going to be like the time she tried to pull it from the cats? <laughs> so much 
much of an awkward line at dinner, began scratching the opening of my vagina with her gloved fingers in an attempt to induce an absolutely enormous suction cup to life in my life. <laughs> now, without a, without a doubt, medical science has made great strides in the past 50 years. However, in my humble opinion, the only truly amazing medical invention in that room with their remote control spotlight <laughs> looked like the sort of thing a fifth grader would come up with. <laughs> it was literally just a giant suction cup at the end of a bicycle pump. <laughs> and other than shedding my lady bits beyond all recognition, it served no useful function whatsoever. My baby had so much hair on its giant head that the suction cup could gain no purchase. <laughs> Gabriel Garcia Marquez wrote in Love in the Time of Cholera that human beings are not born once and for all on the day their mothers give birth to them, but life obliges them over and over again to give birth to themselves. This has been a faithful account of Alice's first kiss. May she begin again and again 